actually got tree branches hanging from it. So out of all the words in the English language, I'm not sure I would have selected Nifty as the particular variant of actor track that DJI has now rolled out on the Mavic 3. And by now you're like, what the F is the Nifty mode? And I'm going to try to show you in this video what the Nifty mode is. And it's actually called Nifty. I'm not like making this up. You see, if you go and update your Mavic 3 to the latest version of the firmware that just came out a couple seconds ago, along with the latest version of the app, and then if you tap the safety option, you will see there is a new option within that under Active Tract called Nifty. And of course, at this moment, you're like, I gotta click the Nifty button. Let's just see what happens. And then it tells you Nifty bypassing allows for smoother flight and more subtle aircraft altitude change when avoiding obstacles. Spoiler, it doesn't. But as of increased collision risks, you will be liable for adverse consequences arising from the use of this feature. And then goes on to say use with caution. So of course, being your resident active track test dummy or something, I went out to try it out. And I tried it in the kind of like two core scenarios. The first one is I tried it while running. And then the second one was I tried it while cycling. And then I layered on top of that a bunch of different obstacles because that's just what I do around here. So with that we're gonna start with the easiest thing running and then when to get more complex pretty darn quickly. So what I did for all of these tests is I basically did multiple passes, once in normal mode and then once in nifty mode, trying to make them as exactly the same as possible. So my speed, the starting position of the aircraft, all that kind of stuff. Of course, once I get going, it's up to the aircraft to follow me, but I was following the exact same path each time. So it in theory should repeat itself more or less similar each time. So starting off right here, I'm in normal mode. Uh, there are trees directly to the side of the drone. So it's got to either go above the trees, behind the trees, in front of the trees. It has to go somewhere else. It cannot go through the trees. I mean, it might, but it should not go through the trees. And as you see, it basically chooses a spot slightly higher than the trees to be able to still see me. Uh, but I kind of play peekaboo throughout it. But overall, it's what we expect of ActorTrack. So then I went ahead and I repeated the process again. I reset back to the beginning and then I went into the menus and I chose the nifty mode. And now I did the exact same thing again. And I'll be honest, at this point, it didn't really seem any different to me. Like doing this, it was like, okay, it seems to avoid the trees, it sees me, but nothing like spectacular or nifty, you might say, seemed to happen here. So I did what any good internet citizen does and I wrote DJI an email. I wrote their like communications team an email and their engineering team and I said, what gives? I didn't really see any difference. And they wrote back to me and they said, yeah, stop being a pansy and go faster. Uh, and essentially they explained that basically within the nifty mode, it's really designed for high speed stuff where it's trying to avoid the obstacles but do it in a way that looks niftier, I guess. So. I did that. I went out today and I threw down the gauntlet with a bike on a bunch of different scenarios. Oh, hey, and a quick note before we get started on this next round. If you find this video interesting and entertaining, just wait. But also go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there. Uh, that really helps with the video and the channel quite a bit. So starting off on the easiest set here. In this case, I've got basically 100 meters of this path uh, before I reach the trees. And I've set the drone off to my right hand side, as you can see, uh, in trace mode and active track. Uh, and it's, you know, like, I don't know, three or four meters, maybe four meters away from me and slightly higher than me. Now, as we get going, it stays where I would expect it to stay. But ultimately, once we hit this tree line, it has to go somewhere else. It can't go into the trees. And you see what it does here on the normal pass, it decides to kind of pull one behind me, slows down a little bit because of the trees there, which is normal. I'm not going like super fast right now. Uh, and then it keeps on following, it eventually then raises up a little bit once it gets out of this tree tunnel and just sort of like floats around. It doesn't get back to my right hand position though at any point for the next little while. I kept on going and it pretty much is the normal active track things, nothing too special. So now I reset back to the beginning again and threw it into nifty mode. So as I start to get going here, you see some differences. It's not really starting to kind of like float a little bit forward, which is strange because you can see clearly I told it to be to the right and it doesn't want to be there. Uh, and it's even more strange, it's got to figure out this whole tree situation in just a second. So here's where instead of going behind me or anywhere else, it basically went above me. And to its credit, this is actually a cooler shot than the shot from behind me in normal mode. Whether or not this is a nifty thing or just like a active track being confused thing, I don't know. But you can see as it keeps on going right now, uh, it's basically just kind of like meandering and choosing its own shot. And I think at this juncture, I'm realizing that nifty mode means it's going to ignore you and just do whatever the hell it wants to do. Uh, and that was like the pattern I saw over and over and over again. I would set it somewhere and it'd be like, nah, I'm gonna go somewhere else. What are you gonna do about it? Uh, and off it went. Like you can see here, there is no part of it where it's at its right side of me. Uh, it's not even like trying to be at its right side of me. It's just all over the place. Now, again, to its credit, it gives me different shots. Like I can't disagree that it, it's got more unique shots, 
but it's not the shots I asked for. So in that case, I guess I could choose normal mode as opposed to nifty mode and I'd be fine. So now we're gonna step it up a little bit and add a bit of speed. This is a straightaway. I told it to be on my left-hand side. There is no obstacles whatsoever on my left-hand side. It should be able to just chill there and cruise along this field as I cruise along next to it. Pretty straightforward, right? You can see it in normal mode here. It wants to like go in front of me a bit, which is kind of strange. Again, there's no reason for that because I've set it to be my left-hand side. Uh, but nonetheless, it's doing its thing. It's relatively stable. I'm okay with the footage. So again, we set it into the nifty mode. We set it left-hand side of the trace and off we go. You can see this time it's decided to stay at my left-hand side properly where it should be. It's not trying to go in front of me like it was in normal mode. So cinematically speaking, this is actually a better pass than it was the first time around. It is gaining a bit of altitude though, which is not something I asked for. And then now it starts to go back towards the front again. Uh, but I will say like it's pulling out a bit, which again, cinematically looks prettier. So I'm not going to complain too much. And now we're kind of back in front of me where I didn't really ask it to be. But again, it's... It's doing its own thing, and right now the shot, kind of the path going off behind me, actually does look better. So there's that for you. So at this point, the path's about to turn to the right, and I'm curious what's going to happen. Is it going to try to follow me, or is it going to completely lose me? And you can see it's basically lost me, but it keeps on going to see where it might find me next. And it almost finds me. It also almost kerplunks this tree, and it looks in there, it's like, yo, I think you might be in there, dude. But by now, I've already long passed it out, and it, it never could quite find me. So that gives me an idea. It's thing's not dead yet, right? So let's try to go through this tunnel falling from behind. So this is the easiest active track mode there is. Uh, it just needs to follow directly behind me and through this tree tunnel. You can see here we are in normal mode getting going there. I'm not going super fast, about 25K an hour. That little tree branch though, that, that was a problem for it. And it basically just, it could not go down low enough to go around it and it couldn't go to the left to go around it. I mean, it had the space to, but it didn't. Uh, and that's where it lost me there. So now it's time to reset to nifty mode. So starting up here in nifty mode, again, exact same placements as best as I could, uh, an exact same spot on the trails. You can see it's going for it. Here we go, up towards that branch, and it seems to really like the branch. You can see, and it's now chopping that branch to little bits. There are small bits of green flying everywhere. And of course, it's also stopped again because now it says the vision sensors are blocked with tree chunks. And so as I went back, I noticed that I was at a pretty big pickle here. This drone had got itself like wedged right in the trees where it couldn't easily go like forward or sideways, any other way except maybe like sliding out to the side backwards a little bit. But I had to take out my phone and show you what it did there. It's actually got tree leaves wrapped around its front left wing spar or front left, yeah, arm spar, uh, which is crazy. This thing is flying along basically trying to like camouflage itself. It knows it's up Crap Creek with me and it's trying to like hide in the trees or something like that. I eventually then manually flew it out of there and it was fine. So at this point in the video, you're like, I'm still not sure what nifty mode is. And to which I say, yeah, welcome aboard. Here's the thing. I think based on everything DJI said and kind of shown and what I've been able to demonstrate here in this video is nifty mode is essentially a drunk version of active track that every once in a while might get the shot. Like it might get a better shot, it might do something better, but it also might kill your drone. And in my discussions with DJI, one of the things they noted is they would expect that nifty mode would primarily be used with a secondary operator. In other words, someone actually having the drone or the controls of the drone to kind of keep tabs on it, rather than after track being like a solo sort of thing, which might make sense. And those sort of scenarios where I look at that and go, yeah, this, this is gonna end poorly and abort the procedure. It is still using the full APAS suite. I've validated that twice with DJI. The full APAS 5.0 suite is leveraged here. So my recommendation on nifty mode would be probably to avoid it uh, unless you have complete control over everything uh, and you are super confident in the obstacles around you. Uh, I appreciate that DJI is trying new things with Active Track. That is like super cool and one of the things that I, I love to see. The thing that I would have preferred instead of nifty mode though would be to be able to use the telephoto lens on there. Uh, that still shoots at 4K, really good quality in the vast majority of scenarios. Uh, I would love to be able to use Active Track with the tele lens. That would be like my dream here because that takes the drone out of the danger spot in lots of cases and it actually gives way better cinematic angles because the focal length then makes the background rush by way faster. It puts the object you're tracking, it makes it look better. I've got to believe they have the power to do that. They just announced as part of my other video that hopefully I've finished up in the corner there, a bunch of changes for the tele lens, making a mostly on parity with the main lens for a lot of the features and functions. So I'm really, really hoping we see them allow the tele lens to go ahead and do active track and do the different spotlight modes. That would be like 
amazing, and that would make me far more likely to utilize this drone versus something like the Mini 3 Pro. Because right now for ActiveTrack, I'm going to trust this because this doesn't seem to get as drunk at the parties as, as this guy does. This guy is a beast and doesn't seem to have the stopping power around obstacles that this little guy has. Uh, and since they both are limited to 4K in active track modes, it's kind of a wash there. Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting or useful or something like that. If so, go ahead and whack the like button at the bottom there. There is plenty more sports technology goodness coming around the corner. With that, have a good one.